My word, the mansion's positively overrun with foreign folk on this most inauspicious of Lucian's days. He catches himself and scrapes his throat in a brief moment of embarrassment. <clears throat> I do apologize if I came across as impertinent just now, and I hope you'll forgive my unabating boldness when I assume Sir has come here in search of an audience with either Lord or Lady Ken. Oh, I meant, of course, the lizard excellencies that have sought shelter under this esteemed roof in the aftermath of the dreadful attack that was inflicted upon the Imperial Consulate. It saddens me to say there are a number of deaths to mourn. But no doubt we all rejoice at the survival of the nobles. After all, a mere clerk is so easily replaced, wouldn't you say? Sir honors me with his applause for my humble assessment. Ah, uh, who? Haven't seen him in a long time. My lord took quite a shine to that cat of his, though. Quite a sight to see the great Lord Linda Kem fawning over another man's cat in the back garden. Lady Kem is having tea in the drawing room over in the North Wing. I'm quite certain a person as obviously well-traveled as yourself will have no problem drifting in that general direction, should he deem it fit to do so. I'm afraid I can't accommodate you with the opportunity to have a word with my Lord Kem at this precise moment, sir. My lord left early in the morning in pursuit of business, and he hasn't yet returned. I'm not privy to the details of my lord's ventures, but I gather his outing pertains to his office as Grand Master of the Paladins and the ousting of certain firebrands from the city. A most noble task, I'm sure. Unless I'm quite mistaken, in which case I once more apologize profusely, you'll most likely find, my lord, in the immediate vicinity of the Magister headquarters. The Magisters, in case my previous sentence lacked clarity, being the firebrands I alluded to. Yes, do please excuse me, for I've a party of dignitaries to attend to. They've an appetite for an aperitif, and the port, needless to say, does not pour itself. Come out wherever you are. Come out, come out wherever you are. How dreadfully crowded these rooms have become. One so yearns Come out, come out wherever you are. I saw Daddy with some weird looking cat in the garden. I think he was even talking to it. He called it Archu, I think. Anyway, I asked if I could pet it, but Daddy shooed me away. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I hope everything is to your utmost satisfaction. What better way to spend Lucian's day than drinking tea with friends? Shall Lord Kem be joining a delicious blend? I envy the ladies' bro- Oh, a fellow noble. Such a dignified carriage could belong to no other. It's a delight to greet someone of my own station. Not that I would judge these present plebeians. They are here by invitation, of course. People like them keep the city's wheels turning and its boats afloat. Magicians among us, truly. An afternoon of hot tea and warm recitations is the least I can offer them. Not at all. We all deserve a taste of luxury from time to time, do we not? I may live in a resplendent mansion, but I still share my riches, one lucky guest at a time. I send an invitation to each citizen at least once a year. A pity my husband couldn't make it. He has his hands full, you see. Lady Kem's bright cheeks fall and her jaw goes slack. 
She is lost in thought for but a moment, however, and puts on a brave and regal face. But I think you'll find present company more than adequate. Tea time is such a delight. No, I was not aware, as it were. Inviting an entertaining guest is usually my purview. But my husband has his secrets, and I'm reconciled to that. If clandestine meetings and secret locked bedrooms in the attic keep him happy, well, a comfortable status quo is not to be sniffed at. Either way, I doubt any invitation extended to Lord Ahu was social. My husband has no great love for the man. Sensitive, dull, civic matters, I'll wager. Lord Ahu is missing. Well, I'm afraid I can't enlighten you as to his whereabouts. The Keeper of the Cathedral's roamings are a mystery to me, as they are to most. I did see my husband in the garden earlier this week, cozying up to Lord Ahu's cat. Perhaps Ahu asked him to look after the beast during his absence. As such, my husband might know better than I. My husband? What is it? What? I thought you said you had bad news. Well, do make the most of your visit. But please, tell me about yourselves. Um, well, ma'am, we were hoping you'd see fit to reopen the school. Tragedy befell us at the consulate. But at least Lord Kem offered us pleasantries and protection. He's one of the few truly honorable souls left in this city. The Lizard Consulate is gone. All that survives of it is what I managed to take with me. Care to see what I have? Perhaps we can make an arrangement. Our Consulate may be gone, but I will not let us be reduced to utter beggars. I merely do what is necessary to fund our ongoing diplomatic efforts. It was quite terrible and wonderful. Slaughter. Death. Opportunity. We were gathered there in anticipation of Lucian's day, when suddenly the ground shook, monsters howled for blood, and fires raged around us. 
many a great name perished in that sudden hell. As for myself, I'm glad I survived long enough to collect what treasures I could. Oh, it was devastating, to be sure. But what good does mourning do for either the living or the dead? I found a spot of fortune in the flames. Best to sell anything of value. The voice of the ancient empire must still be heard in arcs, and that will require gold. consulate lies in ruins. A day of celebration has become a day of catastrophe. I see the horrors still, floating afore my eyes. And you, of course, assured it. I cannot thank you enough, O oh brave soul. The ancient empire is in your debt. I will return to the kingdom soon. Restoration will begin, Duna willing. Ooh, I bit the master Kim, I did. Uh, I could have sworn it was another man in a master suit, but it weren't. Now I'm in the doghouse like the humans say. Couldn't help it. I swear, it came all smelled like when the garden man cuts down a decayed tree, like like he was using flowers to hide the rots. <laughs> Only nudging and tail wag the next time. I promise. Uh, no licking, though. Uh, I don't want to taste the rot again. I've spotted something. I found something.
Careful now, that's a trap. Careful, I've spotted a trap. Careful now, that's a trap. now that's a trap good find Did Kem write this, do you suppose? Or did he just confiscate it from someone else? I'm more concerned about who the target's going to be. Why would Lord Kem have a black ring mirror in his attic? Someone has taken a great interest in Dallas. The surface of the mirror is smooth and unblemished. Not a single speck of dust sits on the black glass. A vision appears. It wavers, then becomes clear. In the reddish light cast by flowing lava, you see a cave. You recognize it. This is the Sallow Man's cave. The roof has fallen in. Nothing there lives.
Honor, please. Tell me about yourselves. Uh, well, now, we were hoping you'd see fit to Well, hello this. again. My husband? What is it? What happened? Oh, there is no doubting that, is there? He seemed resentful of late towards his position, towards the whole order. It was more than mere bitterness then. It was treason! My husband's actions were his own. I do not condone them. In a way, I suppose. My husband showed scant care for others. I did what I could to compensate for his failings. Though not enough, evidently. I care for the people of this city, I truly do. I brought them into our home so that I could hear from them, to let them know that their betters listened to them. Go to the fountain in the garden. Perhaps if you can drain the water, you'll see it in a new light. Here, take my ring. The vault has measures in place against intruders, but this will protect you from them. Farewell. You'll find me. What's this? I found something. The water rises and falls on Lord Ken's command. The bloom opens before your eyes, resplendent and regal. It emits a sweet, subtle scent, like that of a rose, though more intoxicating. Your whole body flushes. You're sure you must be glowing, so deep does the warmth dwell. Sorrow. Our joy shall be the Godwoken's sorrow. Our joy... Sorrow. The unusual bloom continues unabated, as if parroting someone's words rather than speaking of its own accord. The advocate is dead. The doctor is ill. The advocate, advocate, ad, ad. The beast, take him. The beast, take, take the beast. The flower has gone quiet. The water rises and falls on Lord Ken's command.
This is where Ken hides the good stuff.
that's radiating from the golem. We can't defeat it while it contains such power. Spotted something.
What's this? I found something. Spotted something. Focus! of the devourer resembles a dragon's head. Longing pins you in place as ash begins to fall from above. The world is a crudely woven tapestry, but you are an artisan beyond compare. You want, no, need the finest craftsmanship. The longing turns sharp, obsessive. You must return to your workshop. As the pangs fade, someone else lingers near you. woman stares down her nose at you. What are you looking at? Where have you taken me? This is not Arx. I must hear the voice of my finest creation again. I polished every piece with care for the Empress. Close. I hear its song. The outlaw Empress believed in me, believed in my vision. Perfection must be mine again. Take me to the workshop. My masterpiece awaits.
this? I found something. The ghost looks around the room with an incredulous shake of his head and fixates on the set of paintings before him. What a fool I've been. Thieving was the best chance I had of keeping afloat in this wretched city. Never thought that would mean trying to impress a band of urchins, let alone getting crushed by a damn golem. Big Tomorrow said they'd let me in their grubby little guild if I helped them nab that painting of Kems, the second passion of Lucian. Well, we made it in all right. And while Kem's constructs tore me to shreds, they all ran off with a painting. If you don't know her, it's best to keep it that way. That thieves' guild of hers is a cutthroat bunch of young'uns. You! You! The spirit of a painting hovers where the painting itself once stood. The second passion of Lucian, you presume. It's difficult to see the image as it must appear in the real world. This, perhaps, is the moment where Lucian killed Damien and sacrificed himself for the world.
found something. to mind. Perhaps he's been nearby. Dagger of pain shoots through your head, halting your advance instantly. You hear a voice, soft and calm, yet laced with disappointment. Such a long journey you have undertaken in the service of thieving charlatans, in pursuit of that which you will never obtain. A long, sad sigh reaches you from the depths of the void itself. I saw your abysmal treatment of my servant, Isbale. Please, test my patience no further. This is your last chance. Abandon this folly. Le I am the past. I will be the future. I am the God King. You are but a misguided servant. Heed my words and leave. I do not wish you harm unless you force my hand. Because my followers are many, my followers are everywhere. You're in the voice fades away, and with it, the pain. Look, only under the, the God shrine King has a pressure plate. the weight of responsibility. Only the God King knows the weight of responsibility. Lucky find.
flesh is well pop. Seems to be in great pain. Flesh is well past ripe. The man before you writhes in pain, oblivious to you. Otherworldly shackles are coiled all around. The man raises his head with an anguished groan. I am... I am Ahu. Well... Your search is at an end. Apologies if you were expecting a more convivial setting. He coughs up a gout of blood. Before he can dissuade you any further, his eyes roll back and he loses consciousness. doesn't respond to you. He sent... ignores you, focused as it is on tearing the source from its captive. It stinks of dark magic. There's nothing in the spirit but pain, its own and that of its captive. He resists the agony, but it's only a matter of time before the spirits tear his source away. That the spirit seizes the pain you inflict upon it and turns it back on you. The pain you... And then it exists no more. I told you to leave! You're going to kill me! 
You can't. He shudders as fresh waves of pain course through him. Leave. Or you still have a chance. And don't... He passes out, mid-sentence from the pain. His face goes slack as the pain renders him senseless. The man is oblivious to... My dear Lord Ahu, you should have told me you were expecting visitors. Run, you fool! I might ask you the same. This place is mine, after all, and Ahu was my prisoner. Why, Kim? Why betray everything for which you once stood? Betray? I didn't betray the Order. I liberated it. As one of Lucian's pawns, I stood for weakness. Frailty. And then... Then the God King showed me the world as it could be. He made me a promise. He promised me a path unburdened by Lucian's pathetic need to defend the defenseless. He promised me a world dominated by the worthiest bloodlines across the ages. He promised me a lasting seat at his glorious table in return for my oath. For the King chooses only the strongest, the most loyal, the most deserving. And now, Godwoken, I uphold the final act of my oath. Your execution. You can forget about finding Lucian. Believe me, no good comes from our so-called divine. That poison peddler. A swamp frog is a more potent warrior. Let me show you the power of the King's true Chosen.
Bye.
I was convinced the pain would destroy me. That you would destroy me. But you freed me instead. The pain is gone. I feel almost whole. I will be, I think. Now that I'm out of Kem's damnable clutches, he and his black ring cronies will stop at nothing. To think I trusted a traitor. I thought him a friend, a protector of the city. Yet all the while he was trying to gain entry to the tomb, to Lucian's body. Just like you, I presume. You didn't come here by chance, did you? No. Your power, your skill. You're a god woken. Out of the kindness of your heart. No, I think not, God Woken. You want something. You want to enter the tomb of Lucian, don't you? Well, what people believe about my role as the keeper of Lucian's tomb is all part of the Divine's plan. I swore an oath to prevent anyone from ever entering the tomb of the Divine. But that may have been a mistake. I've heard of your deeds. People call you a hero. Maybe you're worthy after all. The Divine's tomb is a fortress, a gauntlet. No single person was entrusted with the entire sequence necessary to enter. Not even I. Lucian, before he died, he arranged for the lone wolves to hunt and harry any rumored god woken until they were dead or banished to the ends of the world. Within Lucian's body resides the very power of the gods. The power to seed a new divine. He insisted this power remain there, eternally sealed within the tomb. To what ends, I don't know. But I know that even in his great wisdom, Lucian could not have foreseen times like these. The Void's silent scream is about to engulf us. This is why I will help you. Because I believe only a new divine can save Rivalon. To pass the path of blood, you must bypass the statue of Lucian. The scroll of atonement, when used with a source amulet, will provide an alternative route. Have you by any chance met Sanders, the toy maker? He was, is, one of the engineers who designed the Path of Blood on behalf of Lucian. He's a genius, but his ways are, let's say, idiosyncratic. He works as a toy seller now, right here in Arx. You may tell Sanders I sent you. Sanders is the expert, but once you claim the amulet and the scroll, I'll explain how to use them. But be warned, bypassing Lucian's statue is just the beginning. 
I may be able to forewarn you of the dangers you will face, but you must still face them. I will answer as best as I can. The Divine worked in mysterious ways, and it was not our place to question him. I hope his spirit will forgive me for breaking my oath. He knew that his mortal remains would hold great power. The servants of the Void would naturally seek this power. We can... <sighs> Good luck, Godwoken. With a glint in the dark of his eye, the spirit of Kem sneers at you. I am sworn to the king, and sworn I remain, Godwoken. I owe you nothing. My aims were, are, no less than the God King's triumph. That's all you can know. Enough! Is it not obvious to you? To own the city is to own the cathedral, to own the tomb, to own Lucian. Lucian is the key. The Seven may be dead, but their essence still lives within his rotting corpse. When the God King claims that final pearl of divinity, his reign will begin. Imagine it, Godwoken, a pure and perfect world. Cowards will no longer beg for scraps and warriors' feet. The fruits of our own labor will belong only to us. The divinity held within Lucian's cadaver belongs only to the king's chosen. And you, you are not worthy. 